Good morning, Breathe New Life Church. Pastors Luke and Amanda Eicher here from Grace Sturgis in Michigan. And thank you to Paul and Sarah Jukes. It's yes. a pleasure to be with you, you guys. sharing this morning with you as you talk about prayer and wrap that up. You know, a lot of us have rhythms, we have habits, we have things that are established in our lives. You get up, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, get dressed, get ready. Maybe you, you check out the news, eat breakfast. We hope you do you a lot of those things on a daily basis. And prayer is one of those things that we want to incorporate into our lives on a daily basis. But before we do that, one of my rhythms, probably daily, for sure at home, but coming to our local coffee shop is a regular rhythm for me. So I'm going to get a coffee and then we're going to go on a journey as we look at what James has to say about prayer, about the story of Elijah, and go on a prayer journey with you this morning. Come with us. one of our favorite places to come, Plum Lake Park. It's a beautiful place outside. And you know, Jesus often withdrew to quiet places to pray. And this is one of the places that Luke and I love to visit, to go on prayer walks or just walk together, have a coffee, one of our rhythms, and take some time to be outside and engage with the Lord. You know, I remember when my oldest daughter, we have four daughters, was just four years old. Actually, she might've even been three when this started. And she decided that she really wanted a dog. Now I was pregnant for kids for a lot of years. We had four kids, four and under. And so when Elena was just three and a half um, and then into four, she really wanted a dog. And we said to her, you know, we're not in any spot to have a dog. We're still having babies. It's a lot of work. We're not sure we want that. But, but our daughter had been taught to pray and she would be so diligent in her prayers. She would pray and pray and pray again for a dog. And as I watched this unfold, as the months went by, I realized that she had a rhythm of prayer that was more than I probably even had in my own personal life. You see, Elena would pray in the morning, right when she woke up, Jesus, give us a dog. She would pray while she was playing with her toys. She would stop, run to her bedroom, shut the door, come out after a few minutes and I would say, Elena, what have you been doing? And she said, oh, I, was, I was praying for a dog. She would pray at bedtime and have us pray for a dog with her again and again and again she prayed. And I was pregnant for my last child and I, I had Maya. Elena was four at the time, almost five. And after we had Maya, Luke and I started to soften our hearts a little bit to the idea of a dog. Maybe that was her prayers that did it. And, and we started to even look at shelters and Elena caught wind of that. And Elena started to hear us say a few things. And so she made a list of things to pray, specific things to pray about a dog. She had heard us say that we want a dog that doesn't shed. So she had that on her list, a, sh a dog that doesn't shed. She heard us say that we wanted it already to be potty trained because I was potty training enough kids. I didn't want to add a puppy into that list. She heard us say that we wanted it to be a little dog, a female already fixed, already have its shots. And she just had this list that kept growing. She wanted a Shih Tzu. She wanted it to be a female. And she even said, and I want her name to be Lola. Well, every day, again and again, she would pray this list. And finally, we were looking at shelters. We had decided, okay, we're going to get a dog. We were looking at shelters to adopt a dog. And I remember seeing pictures of dogs and reading descriptions and thinking, this one would be a good fit for our family. It's not necessarily what Elena has been praying, but this could be a good fit. And I would show it to her. And Elena, with such faith and commitment, would say, no, that's not our dog, mom. That's not our dog. Her name's not Lola. It's not a Shih Tzu. She's not little. And she would say all the things that were on her list again. Luke and I even tried to say to Elena, you know, Sometimes God doesn't always answer our prayers specifically. Sometimes it's not exactly what we asked for. And she had such a faith. No, it's going to be Lola. Once she even cried when I showed her a dog that we were thinking of adopting because it wasn't Lola. Well, we finally just put the search on pause because we didn't know how to help our little girl who had faith so big process what could happen and how it might not be exactly what she had prayed for. But one night I was laying in bed, Luke was already asleep, and I just decided to look again. And when I looked, 
again. A homeless or a, a shelter popped up, not a homeless shelter, a dog shelter popped up. And here was a new picture of a dog and it looked exactly like the dog Elena had been praying for. I read through the description and to be honest, it was like I was reading her prayers that she had prayed day after day for over a year. A small dog likes to cuddle, female, already has had her shots fixed. And the kicker for me was when they said the name of the dog, Lola. Tears immediately came down my cheeks as I lay in bed, realizing that God had specifically answered our daughter's prayers. You see, Elena's powerful and effective, diligent, committed prayers came through. God came through. And when I looked again and realized that her prayers had been answered, I couldn't help but reach out to the owner of the, sh the shelter and say, you're not gonna believe this, but my little five-year-old has been praying for over a year for this dog. I even asked her, how does this dog have the name Lola? And the woman said, well, I found the dog outside somebody's door for days. We got a phone call. She had been abandoned, so I adopted her, or I brought her into the shelter. I took her to the vet to be fixed and to have her shots. And the veterinarian asked me, what's her name? And the first name that just popped into my mind was Lola. Isn't that the Lord? Well, this morning we wanna talk about those faithful, effective prayers. And in the book of James, he shares with us a way that we can all pray. And then he even talks to us about Elijah. And I wanna read those scriptures to us this morning. It's found in James chapter five, starts in verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. This morning we want to focus on that word again. Again Elijah prayed. I love that James points out that Elijah was a human being. You know, I can relate to human beings because I am one. I know that humans struggle with doubts, with fear, with unbelief, with disappointment. When those prayers that we pray don't happen, when we pray for healing and it, it doesn't seem to come, when we pray for breakthrough and it's not there, when we pray for financial provision and it's not there, or when we pray for a dog and it doesn't seem to be the one we're praying for. Human beings deal with disappointment all of the time. But James tells us that Elijah prayed again. Yes, he was human, but he prayed again. And for this season, for you, I believe that there are prayers that God's asking you to pray again. James talks about the healing that can come and the, the powerful, effective, fervent prayers that we can offer in faith. You know, the word for that, when you really look at the, the Hebrew or the Greek, I'm forgetting it right now, <laughs> is that it's action, it's, it's an action verb that you're working, that you're actually moving, that you're doing something. And, and that's the type of prayer that God and James are asking us to pray. Pray in faith, pray and believe that there's action to it. Pray again, even though you're human, even though you've struggled with some disappointments or some heartache or some loss, pray again. And the story that James is talking about is a story when Elijah prayed for rain. You see, Elijah had been the one that prayed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. The nation of Israel had a bad king, King Ahab, and he was leading them in a direction away from the Lord. But the Lord came to Elijah and he said, Elijah, it's time for rain. Go and tell King Ahab that it's time for rain. So Elijah went, and this is found in 1 Kings chapter 18. Elijah went to Ahab. And, and there was a little showdown between the prophets of Baal and, and Elijah. And Elijah even boasts and says, my God can call down, can bring down fire from heaven. And, and sure enough, God brings. 
brings fire from heaven as Elisha prays and, and all of those prophets are slaughtered. It's quite the story. But after that, Elisha says to Ahab this. And Elisha said to Ahab, go eat and drink for there is a sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. That's a fervent and effective prayer. There was action to it. He put work into it. He postured himself. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times, Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, a heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Seven times Elijah prayed. Seven times. Again and again and again. And after that seventh time, he saw a, a, a cloud as small of the... as. A, a cloud, sorry, as small as a man's fist. His servant saw it, and Elisha knew that God was faithful and the rain was coming. This is a season for you as a church, as individuals, for all of us to pray again, to get back into that rhythm of prayer and to pray those action prayers like James says, to pray again. There are lots of things that prayer does for us, and we want to go after some of those things with this message, but prayer aligns our hearts with the Lord. Prayer teaches us about commitment and obedience and prayer releases faith in us. Let's pray again. And as we look at these next three things, our heart for you is that you would be stirred up to pray again. R.A. Torrey writes in his book on how to pray that prayer is the alignment of our soul with God. I broke my watch yesterday. I'm not wearing it. You can see I don't have it on my hand. And already today, multiple times, I've looked at my wrist to see what time is it? What's the date today? Am I late? Um, and I feel out of sorts. I feel like something is missing. There are times in my life when I feel that way. I feel like I'm out of sorts. Something's not right. I might be struggling with depression or anxiety or anger. And I'm just not in a good place. And often what I have found, basically every time, is that prayer is my key and my way out of that situation. See, prayer aligns us with the heart of God. When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said, pray to your Father in heaven, and when you pray, it, it's your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so often we want heaven to respond to our desires on earth, but we want to bring his kingdom and his purposes on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer aligns us with the heart of God. See, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And often when we find ourselves in a place where we're just thrown off, often it's because we've just simply gotten our eyes on the wrong things. We've started to look at what's happening around us. We're looking down instead of up. We're looking inward instead of outward. And we need to approach God in prayer as a way of aligning ourselves with God. Paul writes in his letter to the Colossians in chapter 3, he says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. When we come before God with pra in prayer, we're setting our minds and our hearts on things above. There is an alignment that happens. And we, when we do that, it's almost like we're allowing God to be the master chiropractor in our spiritual life. And he's, he's aligning our spine so that nerves aren't pinched and we're able to fully function the way that he's designed us to function and to go out and live with passion and with purpose. And we saw earlier in the book of James how uh, James referred to Elijah as someone who prayed again. And Amanda talked about how uh, when Elijah, God spoke to Elijah to pray for the rain, he prayed again and again and again. Why did he pray again and again and again? Because Elijah had aligned himself with the heart of God. He knew 
what the purposes and plans of heaven were, and he went diligently and faithfully before God in prayer to bring the plans of heaven to earth. Let us pray again and align our hearts with heaven. Not only does prayer align our hearts with the heart of God, but prayer also teaches us about obedience and commitment. I saw that in my daughter as she prayed again and again and again for a dog. And I read that in the story about Elijah praying again and again for rain. And in our lives, I believe prayer is a great opportunity for us to have that daily rhythm, to, to learn about commitment and obedience. You know, God has asked me to be faithful in prayer on behalf of somebody else in this season. And he's actually even asked me to do a physical act for them daily as a way to commit to pray for them. I have to be honest and say there are days when I actually don't want to do it or I don't feel up to it or it feels like work and it feels like too much. But because God's asked me and because he's teaching me that even a little obedience is better than no obedience. I've learned so much about commitment and obedience through prayer. And I believe that's something that all of us need in this season is to be committed to pray. There's a story that we read in the gospel of Luke about the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. It says a lot right there. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? There's a call for all of us to pray again and again and again. And, and through that obedience, through that commitment, not only do we align our, our hearts with the Lord, but we see that our Father is a good Father who gives good gifts to his children. I learned that so many years ago in my daughter's prayer. I see that with Elijah, and I'm even learning that now in this season with the call to prayer that God has for me. If we can go to the Lord with obedience and pray again and again. You know, the thing I loved about Jesus and what he modeled for us is that his prayer life wasn't religious. It wasn't about a law. In fact, he came and, and showed us how to live a different way, how to live and have a relationship with the Father. But Jesus' prayer life was rhythmic. He didn't always do it the same. Sometimes it was early in the morning before others got up. Sometimes it was late at night or all night. Sometimes it came with fasting and, and, and per diligent prayers. Jesus modeled a way for us to have a personal relationship with the Good Father who gives good gifts and do it as an act of obedience and commitment to him. We need to be like that persistent widow and pray again and again. You know, there are things in my life that I've prayed for for years and I haven't seen them come to pass. And there are times where I feel tired, I feel weary and I wanna give up. Even days that I go and I just say, I don't even wanna pray that again, Lord, because I'm not seeing it happen. But I believe God's speaking to you as a church, to me personally, and to all of us, that this is a season to be persistent in prayer. Elijah was a human being who faced some disappointments and some struggles like us, yet he prayed again. There is a commitment and an obedience for all of us to learn through our prayer life. And this is a season for us to pray again. And so we see that Elijah was someone who prayed again, and he prayed again, and again and again. And in his prayer, he aligned his heart with the heart of God. And that prayer released commitment and obedience in him. And we need that. I need that every day. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure you need that too. Finally, in prayer, we need to come and approach God with faith. So Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly 
seek him. See, there is a reward for those who earnestly seek him and approach God in faith. In fact, faith is so necessary that we can't please God without it. When I was young, 10 years old, my mom got the diagnosis that she had cancer. And as a family, we all met together and my parents did a really good job of explaining to us uh, what the situation was, but of also leading us to say, we are going to be a family of faith. We're going to pray for mom. We're gonna believe for her healing. And so I remember as a young boy, nightly prayer meetings in our home where we would stomp on the head of the devil and we would declare mom's healing. And we believed as a family that my mom would be healed. Well, the difficult thing is my mom wasn't healed, not in this earth anyway. She passed away just before I turned 11 years old, and that was really difficult for me. See, when our prayers are not answered the way that we believe and we hope that they'll be answered, that can rob our faith. We can begin to hear the enemy whisper into our ear and say, you don't, you don't need to have faith in God. God's not going to answer your prayer anyway. And the enemy tries to use that to divert us away from him and to discourage us from living a life of prayer. And that was a real battle that I had to walk through during my, uh, my formative years as a young man, as I was becoming a teenager and growing up, wrestling with faith. And what do I do when faith and reality collide? And when you believe for something, but yet you don't see the answer that you were hoping for uh, to your prayers. And I really wrestled it through and God spoke to me and showed me how he's present in my life from the very beginning and how uh, just because I went through hard things, I also was able to see that God was there with me in those hard things. And he gave me the strength and courage to continue walking through those hard things. In my 30s, my stepmom got a diagnosis that was not a good diagnosis. She was dying of liver disease. And I remember the moment when I had to wrestle with God in prayer. Will I believe for her healing again? Will I pray with faith? Will I give it everything I've got? Will I come to God in faith as I pray for my stepmom? It was a difficult wrestle that I had in prayer, but I remember that coming to that place where I was like, I am gonna believe God and I'm gonna give it everything I've got in prayer. And so once again, we began this journey of praying for my stepmom, of believing for healing, of declaring things in faith and coming and rallying together as a family. And my stepmom also passed away of liver disease. And my dad asked me to share some words at her funeral. And that was a difficult thing to speak at your parents' funeral, especially you know, when you've really wrestled with faith and you've believed for their healing. And as I prepared to share at the funeral, something rose up within me that I pray would rise up within you. And as I reflected on my life and some of the, these big disappointments that I'd walked through of believing for my mom to be healed, only to see her pass away, of believing for my stepmom Loretta to be healed and seeing her pass away, in wrestling with that temptation to stop coming to God in faith and to stop believing for miracles and to stop trusting God in every situation. And something rose up within me and I came to this conclusion, I will not stop. I will not stop believing that he is the God of miracles. I will not stop coming to God in faith. I will not stop trusting my life in the hands of the living God because what other choice do I have? You see, the enemy would like to come and steal, kill, and destroy you. And it begins by him eroding your faith. Brothers and sisters, we must come to God in faith. And I believe that God wants to encourage you, even in your disappointments, to rise up in faith, to continue to press into faith, continue to pursue him and believe again. Some of you need to believe again. And I pray that God would give you the courage today to begin to believe again. In Acts chapter 12, we see the story where Herod, King Herod, seized some of the disciples to persecute them. And it says that he had James, the brother of John, put to death by the sword. And when he saw that that pleased the Jews, he seized Peter as well. And we see here in Acts chapter 12, it says, So Peter was kept in prison. 
but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And we go on to read about this miraculous escape that Peter had from prison as an angel appeared to him and led him through the prison gate, the gate swinging open all by itself. And it's this incredible rescue story. But I think sometimes we forget what it must have been like to be a part of the church in that day, in that season. See, the church, no question, was praying for James. They knew that James had been seized and that he was on death row and they prayed for James to be delivered. And yet James was put to death by the sword. And the temptation certainly must have been there for them to give up and to say, God's not answering our prayers on this one. But it says that the church was earnestly praying for Peter as well. They didn't give up because they saw disappointment. They continued to pray. And we see the incredible rescue story of Peter as the angel delivered him from prison and answered the prayers of the church. Let's not give up in prayer. Let's not give in to disappointment. Let's continue to be people of faith in our prayers. Elijah prayed again. And that's our cry for all of you. That's our heart for you in this season. As you've gone on this journey in the series of prayer and you've learned about prayer in so many different ways, our heart for you is that you would pray again and again and again. That powerful, effective prayer. A prayer that aligns our heart with God. A prayer that releases commitment and obedience, which we all need. And a prayer of faith, even in the disappointment. We want to pray with you. And we know that God has a great journey of prayer that he's already begun in you and he will bring to completion. Would you pray with us? Yes, Lord, we just thank you for Breathe New Life Church and everyone who's a part of it and anyone else who may be watching this message online. Lord, we pray that you would stir our hearts again to prayer. Lord, make us a people of prayer, people who are faithful, who are diligent, who give, uh, make that a rhythm in our lives. Lord, we want to align our hearts with you and with your kingdom that we might know you and know you better and that we might make you known as well. Lord, I pray that uh, through prayer and uh, seeking your face that uh, we would be stirred to discipline and to commitment and to obedience, to living out this Christian faith and the in the purposes and plans of god in our lives lord stir us up to action lord we don't want to just be people who talk about prayer we want to pray and do the work of prayer and we want that to lead and motivate us in life and lord stir our faith yes father stir our faith once again help us to believe once again lord for those of us who have faced disappointments and hardships and and discouragement in prayer Lord, I pray that you would just release faith in us now. In Jesus' name, we reach out and we grab hold of that seed of faith that you have for it and we plant it in our hearts and we, we just pray that you would water it and cause it to grow. In Jesus' name, Lord, move in us, stir up the gift of faith within us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray your blessing, your calling, your plans and purposes uh, over everyone who's a part of this uh, video message today. And Lord, we just pray that you would raise us up a people who pray again. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you so much. Thanks for letting us be a part of this day with you. And uh, hope to catch you again sometime in person in the future.